Hey guys, how are you? This is Ernest Boniface Makulilo, EBM in the EBM Scholars Show. And today I'm going to talk with you about master's scholarship opportunities in Europe. Yes, today we are talking about only Europe. How can you get admitted and how can you get full funded scholarships? and study your masters in Europe. I have so many videos and so many explanations I've posted here about how you can get scholarships in America. But today we turn our eyes and our attention to Europe. How can you do that? How can you be able to do that? So, number one thing, when I'm talking about scholarship in my channel, I usually don't talk about partial scholarship. I'm talking about full funded scholarship, a hundred percent scholarship. I mean, I'm talking about tuition and fees covered. I'm talking about getting stipend, living expenses covered. I'm not talking they pay for your school fees and you have to pay for your cost of living. No, that for me, I'm not considering as a scholarship. I'm talking of full funded scholarship. So don't ask me a question. So uh, are they going to pay for me about uh, my school fees, whatever? All is going to be covered. 99% of all scholarships, they don't give money for your visa. They don't pay for your flight ticket. There are few scholarships. They pay for your flight ticket. There are few scholarships. They pay for your visa too. But not this one. Most of these one, they don't. So, don't stop applying scholarship because you'll be paying for your visa. Visa is $50 to 150 so you cannot stop applying because of you, you know you will be required to pay a hundred dollar you forget that the cost of tuition and fees and the scholarship itself for living stipend is over twenty five thousand us dollar per year so you, you you get upset you just because of a hundred dollar no so just bear with me follow me on these ways on how you can be able to do that so when we are talking about scholarship just from the start remember we are talking about full funded scholarship again before i continue further i usually prefer to ask people one big favor i don't know whether it's a small favor just to subscribe to my channel in case you haven't done so and then you can be able to continue you are happy i'm happy good day then okay so let's continue you are applying you want to start number one thing when you want to go to apply in europe you have to know when is the academic year when how many semesters do they have and when does the academic year start so usual whether in europe or other countries in the developed world we have just like any other place we have maybe summer semester we have uh, winter or spring and then we have uh, they call autumn semester but in the us we call fall so it's just the there's a time you can start your studies most of the school they start <coughs> excuse me they start in august august september is when many schools are opening at that time that is the official start academic year but you can also start in january it's okay you can start in june in summer you can do that but for international students for scholarships usual most of the scholarships you start i didn't say all most of the scholarships you start your studies in autumn semester which is a fall semester you start in the month of august or early september that is when you are going to apply to start for after knowing that where you are going to start it means you need to know when do you need to apply because there is applying and there is start of studies. You don't just apply today and someone is going to give you $50,000 to go to study. There is a budgeting. So budgeting, it works with the what we call timeline. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you apply, you apply in most cases, most of the schools, they open their admissions se season to start from the month of August until the month uh, of December. So from August to December is most of applications they are at that time to apply. Very few applications you can apply until January. So especially in Europe, there are so many schools, their deadline is in January. So, but once you are starting putting your plans, just think about deadline is in December. 
mid December most. But there are few scholarships, or oh, still many, they go up to the beginning of 15th of January. So that is another thing. So when you apply from August to January, for instance, or end of December, you are applying, for instance, we are talking now, I'm making this video, is the year 2019. You are applying in order to study in the year 2020, August. If you apply in 2020, for instance, you apply in July, August, September 2020, you are applying to go to the year after. Because once you apply, there is a process of looking everyone, notifying the people, getting the visa, and going to study. So it's a long process. So that's why there is almost eight months to a year in advance before you go to study. What does that mean? It means you need to have a plan. A plan about when am I going to study? And how many universities do you need to apply? Because if you are, you know for sure, this is 2019. If I apply, I apply for the year 2020 in August. So if you make a bad play, if you just apply very, very few universities, maybe three universities or two universities, and you don't get it, that is going to affect your timeline. Meaning you have to, you have lost already from August or from September to another September, one year. And then you have to apply 2020 to go to 2021 in August. So almost two years. So 24 to almost 30 months, you'll be just waiting for another opportunity. So why do you need to do that? The better way you usually tell people, apply as many universities as possible. Apply to 20 universities. There is no way you can apply 20, 30, 40 universities and don't get even one. There is no way if you can put free kick, 50 free kicks, and you cannot get even one goal. You'll do, you'll get at least one. So that's how even Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, they do, they score more goals because they make a lot of shots, attempts on the target. So you have to do the same technique. The technique is simple. Just apply as many universities as possible. As long as you qualify, just apply. So that you don't waste two years to wait for opportunity. So if you want to go, to apply, say, okay, you have to make a decision. The year 2020, I'm going to start my master's degree. Where I do not know yet, but to be in Europe. So make sure that you have everything is required in order to apply. So what other things you need to prepare in order to apply for scholarships in Nor I mean in Europe? One of the things also you need to prepare or to understand is the English proficiency test. Remember, if you're an international student, likely you are not coming from Britain. Likely you are not coming from those countries like Australia. You are coming from Africa. You are coming from Asia. There is no country in Africa or country in Asia. The native language is English. So if your native language is not English, you have to take English test, English proficiency test. There are two tests. There is test of English as a foreign language, 12. Is American. And there is International English Language Testing System, I-E-L-T-S, British. So you choose one of the exams. Both exams, they test the same similar thing, writing, listening, reading, and speaking. It's not testing your intelligence, it's testing you the English knowledge. That's all. Nothing much. So, the same exam if you are in high school, the same exam if you are in bachelor, you have master's, you have PhD, you are all doing the same exam. So, don't fear that exam at all. You need to take the exam. So, if you want a scholarship, take the exam. Don't start, I'm looking for a university or scholarship which can exempt me from taking. Don't wait for, for sympathy. Just prepare yourself. That exam is around 210 for toll free, around 250 for uh, for ILTS. So ILTS you have to do it through the British Council in your country. Twelve you have to do, depending on the center, you just go to the Google search, uh, or to the website of the uh, TOEFL, which is eats.org slash TOEFL. So you just go there, or you go to the Google search and write TOEFL exam center in your country, you'll find the centers, you can be able to take the exam. Without the exam, you'll be just every time, I'm looking for scholarship, I'm looking for scholarship, but you'll be wasting your time. Okay, so you have to check the English exam, the certificate, apply as many universities as possible. So, in Europe, again, is divided. Uh, there are universities, they have scholarships provided by the country 
or by the government. And there are scholarships which are provided by institutes, specifically like the university. For instance, if you apply, for instance, in, uh, in, uh, in Netherlands, there are scholarships which are funded by the government through what we call, they call NOFIC. Is a fellowship. So many people, when they go to study in Netherlands, they get NOFIC. There are other uh, banks or financial institutions or just like other public institutions, they can provide uh, scholarships. Uh, there are scholarships, for instance, if you go to Norway, they used to have what they call quota scheme program. Now it's no longer there. But again, in Norway, all universities, public universities, they, are, they don't have school fees. You can just check that. I've already made the video for that. Then you can go to Sweden, Swedish. Uh, there are programs, scholarships in Sweden. There are so many programs over there. Uh, Uppsala, whatever. There are universities. They are very famous for bringing international students and giving scholarships. There are so many universities in Finland. Uppsala, sorry, yeah. So there are so many over there. Over there, you can go to Denmark. There are so many scholarships. So there are so many scholarships in in in, in France, Belgium, Switzerland. Uh, government uh, of Switzerland they have provided so many scholarships. Government of Belgium have so many scholarships as a government. And then there is overall what we call Erasmus Mundus scholarship. If you Google Erasmus Mundus scholarship, you will find a lot of scholarships of so many universities in Europe. And some of those universities, they are big universities and they cooperate. You can go to study each semester in different universities. That's how they partner. So, but you cannot get all those if you don't do the right job. The right job is take the English proficiency test first. After that, make sure that you apply at least 20 universities. After that, make sure that you have a very strong resume. After that, make sure that you have a very good people who can recommend you good recommendation letters for all those 20. Make sure that you have prepared, you have enough uh, uh, time to write very good, comprehensive, competitive statement of purpose explaining your background, explaining your academic and professional experience and what is your aspirations what are your dreams what are you going to do upon completing your studies but remember never say my dream is to go to study in norway and become a norwegian to stay there you will never get a scholarship even if you have first class gpa they want to for you to go back to your country and explain in different ways on how they can be able to succeed. What programs, what activities are you going to do upon finishing your studies? So, those are the key when you are looking for scholarship in Europe. And the good thing, in Europe there is no the GRI or GMAT or LSAT those kind of examination. I've been talking about these exams. I've been talking about GMAT here. I've been talking about GRI. I've been talking about LSAT, G graduate record exam. These examinations are not in Europe. Unless maybe one university can request, okay, give us GMAT. I've seen there is some university, they might, maybe one or two. But overall, there is no GMAT. There is no GRI. There is no a requirement of LSAT or MCAT exam. Those exams are only for America. What does that mean to you? That means you have just one exam, the English proficiency test exam, no other admission exam. So that means for the financial point of view, for the resources point of view, you'll use less money to prepare your application, which is very good. Then there is the aspect of application fee. In Europe, there is no application fee if you are applying for master's or PhD. So that is the advantage you are having. No application fee, which is different from America. If you apply to US in particular or you apply in Canada, you have to pay application fee between 50 to to $100. So that is how you go. That means you just take the English proficiency test and you start applying. So what do you need to do? is to apply, apply, apply. Just take the exam and apply. There is no money for application fee. There is no money for extra exam. I don't know. I wish I would be the one, like, now if I would be in Africa, for instance, I was in Asia, and there is a guy like me giving all this information, posting everywhere. 
could get I could get over 50 scholarships because at the time I was applying for scholarships there was no blogger there was no YouTube someone is sitting there explaining all these things you were just like even the internet was just 2007 2006 2008 it was still no social medias like if someone can post on Facebook Instagram all these things there are no those kind of opportunities but now there are we can post all of those or I mean these opportunities on social media we can not just post like opportunity the link we go to explain how you can be able to succeed Everything is easy. Your job is just don't think, just do what we are telling you to do. You are going to succeed. That's how you get masters or PhD in Europe. And if you ask me, where should I start to apply, Europe or America? I will tell you start with Europe, even if your dream is to come to America. Or your dream is to go to Canada. But for the point of resources, if you are applying to come to America, you have to spend a lot of money. Application fee for each university, GRI, GMAT, whatever, all this crazy stuff. But in Europe, it's straightforward. Just one exam, no application fee, no nothing. It's just, just boom, you just apply. So don't get an excuse. Don't tell me you have been looking for scholarship for over three, four years. Because if any person is usually asking, I've been looking for scholarship, I've been applying for four years, I don't get it, it's very difficult. I usually ask them two questions. What is your GPA? And another question is, did you take the English profession test? If the answer of the first question is your answer is lower secondary, pass GPA very, very low, I know the reason why. But if your answer is uh let's say your answer is you know i haven't done the gri i mean i haven't have, you applied to europe i haven't done the english provision test I said, okay you have never applied for scholarship in a serious applying for scholarship you have to take the english proficiency test it's just like you say oh I, i've tried so hard to play world cup have you ever played world cup among those 32 teams no so you have never played for world cup simple and clear so let me end here and not waste my time your time for for so much information but overall that is how it is scholarships in europe make is a, your number one target compared to america or canada uh whatever other countries because it is free of charge the same applies to, uh, to europe is the same thing applies to australia and new zealand if you are, want to apply there it's the same procedures no application fee no uh, other exam except the English proficiency test. So, remember to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to look on suggested videos so that you can be able to succeed. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for your support, and I wish you all the best in completing applications. And make sure that you have a timetable to take the English proficiency test. Toy free O I E L T S. Goodbye, everyone.